This ministry is made possible by the faithful support of viewers like you. And so... This is the day that God has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the church with no walls, and we are so happy that you found us and that this is an opportunity for us to worship together no matter where you are in the world because that's what a church with no walls is all about. It's about reaching wherever people are anywhere in the world. That's right. We have people that join us from all over the globe so welcome and i hope you're having a great day you know we're getting really close to christmas now the countdown yeah, is coming really quick. on we're getting ready to uh well we haven't done our christmas cards yet and that's a big deal here so i think they come <laughs> in the mail in a couple of days and yeah. i'll get those out we have quite a few we send out to all of you that we have your the address for and it's a real joy to be able to do that well, I'll tell you what, if you send us your address, we'll send you a Christmas card. That's not a, we would love to be able to do that for you, but hey, we can only <laughs> send it out to people who we know. Otherwise, we got a digital Christmas card. Is That's that right. right? Yes, we would. No, so, not yet, but I'll prepare it out of the photo and we'll be posting that. And uh, so if you want to send us your email address, we'll send that to you as well. And so you can just s simply send it to Robert oh, Schuller Ministries. Exactly. Robert Schuller Ministries at Gmail. Dot com, or yeah. it'll be here on Facebook too. Oh, there you go, and we'll put it out. We'll post it on Facebook. Yes. So I guess all of that is unnecessary. Yeah. But but what's what's wonderful is for us to be able to recognize during this Advent season that this is the Sunday of love, and that families across America and around the world are lighting the candles uh, of today the the love candle uh, about Jesus and the love that He brings into the world. And so we get the opportunity of lighting that candle. And it's also the Shepherd's Sunday. So we will, So later in my message, I'm going to be reading the account of the shepherds, how the angels came to them, and the shepherds responded to the angel's call and went to, to worship Jesus and to express their love to him. You know, we often have a candle uh, at Advent wreath and candles. We've done it for years, but it's a good thing we didn't try it today. It's a little windy and cold out That's here. That's for sure. Even in Southern California. Yeah. So, uh, Well, it's not as cold as it is windy. There yeah. is no way this candle would have survived the wind. No. But, uh, <laughs> but anyway, we, we are just really, really happy to, to have you joining us during this season the season of Advent, and it's a, a time for us to have anticipation for the coming of the Messiah, the, the Jesus, the Christ, the extension of God into human flesh. And so it is with excitement and anticipation that we celebrate today the shepherds receiving the word from the angels and expressing their love to Jesus. That's right. So uh, we have a few more Sundays after this. So keep tuning in every Sunday. Uh, we love you. God loves you. And so do we. Merry Christmas. Thank you for being a part of Vital Living Sunday this week with Robert and Donna Schuler. Our ministry is made possible by the faithful support of people like you from around the world who join together to help spread this positive message of God's love. Would you consider partnering with us? It could make a world of difference. Now join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this amazing season of Advent as we wait for the arrival of Jesus, our Savior, our Lord, the light of the world. Thank you, Lord, that you infuse us with more love during this season, with more joy, with more happiness. As we remember memories from the past, both happy ones and, and sometimes sad ones, Lord. I ask that you would bless people with a little extra encouragement 
as sometimes the holidays can be sad. Lord, but as we prepare for your birth, as we look around us and find joy in the lights and in the music and the happiness of children and, and adults alike, Lord, thank you for reminding us that you are the answer, that you are our joy. We love you, Jesus. Amen. No matter where you are in the world, you can be a part of this dynamic faith community. Go online to drshuler.org today and download our community app. There you can request prayer and pray for others. Receive positive, encouraging content from Dr. Schuler and more. I want to share with you the story of the shepherds as we experience the love that they felt and they went to visit the Christ child. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them. And the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angel had left them and had gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off, and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed. They were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. What an amazing scripture we have today of the shepherds. The shepherds out in the fields keeping watch over their flocks. And the angels appears to the shepherds. One of the lowliest of people they are. And as tradition or people have said that many of the sheep that these shepherds were tending were actually sheep that were intended to be used for the sacrifices in the temple. Here we have sheep tended by the lowliest of people intended for sacrifice for a purpose and for a reason. And the purpose and the reason to is express God's amazing love for you and for me. <laughs> that's, that's the amazing thing, that here this birth, the birth of this child, is an expression of God's love for you and for me. <laughs> love is seen in a lot of different ways. Uh, this time of the year, we... We celebrate by doing different things and, and we, we give gifts and, and we look at the history of, of, the, of the child and the Christ child and we see the expression of love that God has for us as, as his people, as his children. And I can't help but stop and think about uh, the, 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 the history of St. Nicholas. St. Nicholas is a real saint. He was one of the saints of the church. He was actually born in what today is Asia, Asia Minor, or today we know it as, as Turkey, present-day Turkey. And there he was born around 280 A.D. Well, 280 A.D. was a tough time to be a Christian in 280 A.D. Uh, the, the Romans are still going through and they're persecuting the Christians. But this is the world he was born in, a Roman world, a, a dictatorship that, that controlled most of the, of, the, of, the, 
of what we would know and know as Western civilization. And there he was born. And he wasn't very old when both of his parents died and he was an only child and inherited their great wealth. He was actually a son of wealthy parents. But he was a good man. <laughs> and in his goodness, he would give to the poor. He would give charity to those. And he would, he would meet. And he would always do it secretly. <laughs> he wanted all the glory of, his, of, of the gifts that he gave being given to God. And so he would never let people know what he was doing. The myth or the story as it goes is that there was one merchant who was filing bankruptcy. And in the time of Rome, in the, two, in the, in the fourth century, in the, in the turn of the century between 280 and 420, uh, some, which is the period that this story would have taken place, if somebody went bankrupt, they were in prison, their kids were sold off, everything was... What they, they literally would be sold off into prostitution or, or into slavery or some of the other manner like that. So this merchant got the idea of only he could marry off his three daughters. That's all he had was three daughters and he wanted to marry them off. He didn't want them being sold into slavery and becoming, and becoming, or becoming prostitutes or, or, or something of that nature. But in order for them to get married, which is his first choice, he needed a dowry. He didn't have the money for a dowry. St. Nicholas found out. So he secretly threw in a bag of money into the, into his, through his window, and apparently it landed in a stocking. And when he found this treasure, he was so excited, he went and he had his oldest daughter married. And not long after that, St. Nicholas realized he has three daughters, and the next one was ready to get married, but she needed a dowry as well. So what did he do? He took another bag of money, and the same thing happened. It landed in a stocking. <laughs> she got married, and with that, this merchant saw this happen two times. He goes, I have a third daughter. If this happens again, I'm going to find out who did it. And sure enough, he catches St. Nicholas in the act of his generosity and of his giving. <laughs> and... From that point on, we have been hanging stockings from our fireplaces with the, with the hope and the anticipation that St. Nicholas will come and drop a treasure, drop something special into our stockings. It's an expression of love. And it's an expression of, of giving to a, it, that's gonna, in a way that's going to make a huge impact in someone's life. And here this man, uh, before he became the bishop, before he became the, the man who brought together all of the other things that we know about th theologically and other things, he was the one who tried to give anonymously so that all glory would go to God. <laughs> here we are in this Christmas season, and St. Nicholas is the way we give anonymously. <laughs> The kids come down. Where did that come from? Oh, it came from St. Nicholas, when in reality it came from mom and dad, right? It came from somebody we know. But here's the message of this season, the message that we get from the shepherds, that there is a gift waiting for you, a gift of tremendous value, something that's going to save your life. Something that's going to transform you in such a way that you can't even possibly imagine it. And it's so magnificent that the angels came from heaven and will come to the lowliest of the low. And they come and they say, I have a gift for you. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace, goodwill to men. Receive this gift. It's a sacrificial lamb. It is a baby. It is a child that is born, grew to become a man, showed us the, the way to be reunited with God. <laughs> and we have the, the ex and we experience the truest love of God. As he pays the ransom for our failures, he pays the ransom for our mistakes, and he draws us to himself because he loves us so much 
and he loves us just the way we are. All he asks in return is that we give him glory, that we give him praise, that we love him back. This is the message today. The message of God's love for you. So embrace it. Accept it. And say, thank you, Jesus, for the greatest gift of all. Your son, Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment where we can gather together around the world and just feel your embrace. So touch us with your peace. Warm us with your love. Surround us with your goodness. We love you, Lord, and we praise your name always and forever. Amen. And now, may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always and forever. Amen. Thank you for being a part of Vital Living Sunday this week with Robert and Donna Schuler. Our ministry is made possible by the faithful support of people like you from around the world who join together to help spread this positive message of God's love. Would you consider partnering with us? It could make a world of difference.